Yo, hello everyone, it's me again. Uh, today I'm coming at you with a build guide video for once in, you know, quite some time. And this is going to be a Righteous Fire Chieftain that I took to level 95 in the SSF Blast from the Past League. Um, I played this character for 30 hours, which is like three days. And I'm level 95 and I've basically completed my gear. Um, I haven't been playing today at all, but when I was pushing, I was able to get the top chieftain and like the number one chieftain on PoE Ninja. And also when I was pushing, I was top 50 in the SSF Blast from the Past event, but I haven't played today. So I dropped down to like 80, although I'm still, oh, I'm 70. I'm actually rank 70, even though I haven't been playing today and among the chieftains, this is uh, like top five. So I would definitely say this build is fairly good. I would say this build is very competitive. It's super easy to gear. It maps fast, it kills fast, it farms fast. And most importantly, it's very SSF viable. It's very easy to progress gear on this character. And in fact, I have never had a more easier time progressing a character ever than playing this one. It's so easy to gear, and it's so easy to get to a point where you feel powerful. And also, a fun fact, I have not spent a single Exalted or Divine Orb on this build. None of these items have been crafted using a single Divine or Exalted Orb. I have three Divines sitting here, I can't even use them because there's no need to. So this build is like super duper SSF viable. So without further ado, let me just show you guys a map. And then after that, we'll talk about the path of building. And then after that, I'll talk about the Atlas tree. I'm also going to note that this is a very specific build and it excels at certain content like pushing, you know, XP, in my opinion, and farming things where you can take advantage of the Chieftain Explode node. So this is a very specific build and I would recommend you do only very specific content with this build. So I'm also going to share like my Atlas tree as part of this build guide. So this build guide will not only be just path of building, it'll also be a recommended Atlas tree. And also I'll share like leveling stuff as well. So without further ado, let's just do a map. Uh, here's a tier 16 infested valley and I'll run this with Abyss and I'll show you guys an expedition as well. And I'll also put some domination and Exarch altars, although I'm probably not gonna click any of these cause I want this gameplay to be like accurate. All right, so we'll just do this. Um, and yeah, the build's pretty good. The area of effect is decent, and the uh, the clear is the most satisfying thing. Oh, you see, you see that explosion? The explosions are super nice for clear, and when they do happen, it's very noticeable, and it makes a really cool sound effect. So yeah, other than that, it's basically just your standard righteous fire build. Righteous Fire, Fire Trap, and oh, there's another explosion. And the mapping is very comfy. I could do the harvest, but I want to show you guys the mapping instead, so maybe we'll skip it for now. Um, but yeah, uh, with 90 all res and 6,600 life and maximum chaos res, this build is fairly tanky, I would say, in addition to 30-40% attack block. Build's fairly comfy. Oh, there's another explosion. So mapping with this build is super easy. And the best part is, again, you know, this is zero exalted, zero divine budget. So, oh, there's an explosion. That that pack died before I could even press Infernal Cry. So super comfy to map with, super cheap. Definitely SSF doable. And in fact, the more density there is, the better this build is, because the more explosions. And then here, the expedition. Uh, I was actually farming with like the Oppenheimer expedition keystone, but I took that off to push for XP. But we can just like do one of these anyway. So uh, I don't even know. I'll just put random shit down. I'm not even specced into Expedition right now, but 
Well, I'll just do this to show you guys how easy it is to farm expedition. So I'm just like doing this. Yeah, you know, I don't even know what's going on. I'm like half asleep right now. I don't even think any of these enemies can deal any damage. Press Infernal Cry. You can cast Punishment as well on the enemy. Oh, there's another explosion. Login. Uh, sometimes I press uh, Punishment just to get a bit more damage, especially if they're tanky. And then also Infernal Cry to cover an Ash. Well, there's another explosion. Um, but yeah, this build's like super good for doing very specific content. It's very good at Expedition. It's very good at Harvest. It's really good at doing Abyss as well. And also just like, you know, Domination, obviously. Just go in and explode everything. It's super easy and chill to map with in T16s. Um, and then the movement speed and the, mobil the mobility is also pretty decent. You have shield charge and faster attacks. Yeah, pretty good. Um, the only thing that's a bit lacking is a damage. And it is a little weird that you have to stand still to get your damage as Chieftain. But as you can see, the T16, T16 map boss went down pretty easily. And this build is also kind of scuffed. I, I did a couple mis I made a couple mistakes when I was building this character. So this build is slightly scuffed. Um, if I had optimal gear, I would have three times the damage, and I'll explain why once we get to the POV section. But as you can see here, I'm farming Abyss, and this is a maximumly juiced Abyss. This Abyss is like maximum investment into Abyss on the Alice Tree, and all I'm doing is like running around, Fire Trap, occasionally Infernal Cry. Um, yeah, and you know, super good for farming XP, super good for just killing a lot of mobs in general. Yeah, and the explosions are also really nice and they also make a really cool sound effect. So, oh wow, look at all these, look at all these items I have to pick up now. Never going to finish making this video. Um, yeah, not much to say, it's just righteous fire with explosions. I guess. Um, okay, I'm probably not gonna pick up all these things because I'm also not really playing this character. I just wonder what these fractures are. Accuracy, what a bunch of bullshit. Okay, so yeah, that's basically the mapping showcase. As you can see, pretty comfy stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, level 95, 90 all res, 24,000 armor. 1.3k regen, which is pretty low, but it's enough. 76 chaos res, 37% chance to block attack damage, ignite immune, uh, and then I'm getting uh, shock immunity from Garakon Pantheon with a reduced effect of shock. So like 100% reduced effect of shock. And then freeze immunity from Brand King, chain stun immunity, and then chill immunity, I don't have, I have 50% reduced effective chill, but I haven't needed to get the other 50%. If I was being optimal, I would like craft reduced effective shock chill on my boots. But yeah, that's basically the build and the map. Um, and then my items are basically just whatever. This build, this build just has a whatever scepter, double dot multi plus one fire and burning damage. The glove is just life, and then fire res, regen, chaos res, uh, crafted area gems for the auras, which I put in my glove. So plus one to determination, punishment, malevolence, purity of fire. Helmet is a is a fire trap helmet with a essence of horror. I this ideally should be an elder helmet, but I didn't have time to craft it, so I just crafted this, which was good enough. Uh, so Essence of Horror for 30% more elemental damage, and then just Life Res, uh, Crafted AoE Gems and Area of Effect, and I put Fire Trap in here. And then Body is a Glorious Plate, which I, I colored by using, uh, I crafted a triple blue socket with a crafting bench, and then I did Vorichi to get this white socket. And just Armor, PDR, Gravisius mod for PDR, and then Fire Res. 
amulet is just life down multi. It should ideally have plus one or plus two, but I didn't have time to make that, so I just have this. And I anointed entropy, which is not ideal, but you know, it's what it is. Uh, shield is just max fire res, life, and I got 13% chance to block, which is not necessary, but it's nice. Boot is just regen, fire res, armor, movement speed. And then the belt, I, I didn't drop it immortal flesh. If I had immortal flesh, I would use it, but I don't, so I just have life, armor, res. The rings are just chaos res, and these I crafted just by doing harvest, uh, reforge chaos and harvest. And then, you know, just reforge chaos until you get chaos res life, and then craft something. So pretty easy to craft all this stuff. Um, I'm going to talk more about the crafting um, soon, but I just want to show you guys like what gear I was running on this character. Okay, so now we can go to the POV part of the video. So this is basically the skill tree. Um, the main idea behind this build is that you capitalize on the free defense that Chieftain gives you, and you basically can just like build offense and like whatever other shit you need, right? So you, you basically take Valico Storm Embrace and Talisio Cleansing Water, which allows you to get like 90 all res if you can get 90 fire res or max fire res. And then this allows you to like make half of your fire res apply to cold and lightning. So this build has like 500 fire res, right? Um, and then you, co you combo that with the fire mastery that allows you to regen life for uncapped fire res. So this build has like 500 fire res, and then this is giving me like, you know, 500 life regen. And then that also is giving me 250 cold and lightning res, right? So I was like totally unhinged. So you basically, I have like no res on all my gear. I don't have like a, I basically have like no lightning or cold res, and I'm still overcapped by 85%. So like exposure, elemental weakness, curses, basically anything that reduces my res is going to do nothing. So like you don't have to worry about any of that bullshit which is like super comfy for mapping. And it also helps a lot with the gearing to basically have your max res overcapped like this for free. And that also makes SSF crafting a lot easier. And then other than this, you just take this for explosions and then this for damage. This is kind of a messed up node because like any, any other ascendancy can like get this for free. Like all you need to do is get exposure as 18 and then flammability, which is like 25, and then like scorch, which is like an another 20. And then like basically any build is able to like make the enemies res negative 20 or lower, like at all times for RF. So this node technically gives you no damage, which is messed up. And it actually causes you to lose damage because if you want to build around this, you have to use punishment because there's no other good curse, right? 58% increased damage taken on low life. So it forces you to build around punishment, but then like when you're moving around, you just have like less damage because you don't have a way to like make the enemy's res go down because it's like wasted on single target. So this note's kind of messed up and it's also kind of bad that it forces you to stay stationary, but I mean, that's the tools that you're given. So, you know, when life gives you shit, make shit aid, right? That's what they say. But yeah, it's basically the ascendancy. And then the tree is pretty straightforward. This is like an optimized tree that I put together. And the most notable thing about this tree is that it takes six life masteries. And I thought that this was really efficient because I ended up running out of damage nodes to take, right? So like, if you look at full DPS here, I ended up like, well, you'll see in a second, but basically I'm taking one, two, three, four, five, six life masteries. And that allows me to get, where is that shit? 10% uh, more maximum life. So that is allowing me to have like 7k life before arrogance. And that basically like solves your life problem. Like you're never gonna be like squishy on this build because of that. And so as you can see, like, I I'm sorting this by full DPS, and there's just, like, nothing to take. 
like the the red highlighted nodes are the ones that are good for you. I guess I could go spiritual aid, but I found that not to be very efficient. Like it only gives you a little bit more flat damage. So I ended up not going for that. So yeah, because there was like nothing good to take, I ended up just going six life masteries. If you were if you were playing this build in trade or like if you had like perfect clusters, like fire cluster, eight passive, fire dot multi small uh, medium cluster. If you were if you had like optimal clusters, you could take a cluster setup here and just like run less life. You would probably drop like this life wheel and then you would drop like three three or four life masteries and just get a cluster set up. And then you basically go down to like 5k life, but you would have like a whole cluster of damage, which will probably give you 500k to like one mil more damage. So like that's something you could do and it would also increase your AoE if you had like the correct notables, but I didn't have time to do that. So yeah. Other than that, the tree is basically pretty uh, standard, pretty straightforward stuff. It's just, you know, make sure to take your area of effect nodes. So that means, you know, explosive impact, this small node here, amplify, and then these small nodes here, which give AoE, because the more AoE you take, the better, the more damage output you have in maps. So definitely take those nodes. And then other than that, it's basically your standard RF tree. You guys take fire damage, dot multi, life. You take your two mana reservation wheels here and here. Elemental damage, and then just life, fire dot multi, armor and shit. And then for the masteries, you take six life masteries to get 10% more life. One of, the, one of the aura masteries can be max res, and the other one can be increased aura effect. And then I recommend taking this one if you have a point to spare to get more mapping ability and then definitely this fire mastery to get region for uncapped fire res and then there's also this other node here this mastery here which allows you to get three percent more explode chance which i do recommend taking just because it could potentially enable like chain explosions so like you combo this with this and it allows you to get more explosions so i would definitely try to take this and then you can get another max res here from the armor mastery here, plus one. Um, and then, yeah, that's basically the tree, pretty straightforward. Um, I guess I could also talk about like how to level this character, but I think I'll talk about that like after gear. So then for the gear, again, this is pretty straightforward stuff. Um, again, every single one of these items was like, created without a single exalted or divine and this is like a theoretical setup which i put in pov with like an optimized way to get 90 fire res um but i'll also link my character in the video as well so you can see how it's different but yeah you know again like most of this is pretty common knowledge for rf build so i don't want to go too deep into this um but yeah it's just the scepter you know try to get plus one or plus two and then burning damage, fire dot multi, and then fire damage ignite chance. The ignite chance is important for uh, fire trap. And you will probably need some divines to craft this, but like my character is the one that does not has not been craft has not used any divines or exalted. But obviously, if you have them, you could definitely get an upgrade. So yeah, that's a scepter. And then get like a scepter with like a good implicit for elemental damage so you can scale rf and then the shield i just recommend using a shield like this just fire res max fire and then chaos life armor and then helmet ideally you have an elder helmet and then you click essence of horror until you get 30 percent more damage and burning damage or conch or both and then if you get like life regen that's like good as well I would definitely recommend crafting plus one to level of AoE gems on the helmet and the glove. This gives you 20% increased area of effect, which is really important. And then the plus one in the helmet allows you to scale fire trap, and the plus one in the glove allows you to scale your auras, especially purity of fire. Because if you can get purity of fire to 23, that allows you to get one extra fire res. 
So very important to get purity of fire to level 23. And you can achieve that in a lot of different ways. Uh, another tip that I got from someone was like, when you're leveling this build, you want to level six purity of fire in your offhand. And the reason is that if you can val them at 20 and then make one of them 21, it allows you to get one extra fire max res a lot sooner. So that's like very powerful, right? So like in the offhand, I would prioritize getting a 21 purity of fire and then a level 21, 20 RF and then a level 21, 20 fire trap in that order. Okay, so that's the helmet, and then the body is pretty straightforward. It's just glorious plate. You just want maximum armor bases, and you just get like as much armor. It's very important to not have a life modifier on this because this is a six life mastery build. So if you have a life modifier, it does nothing because then you don't utilize the uh, fifteen percent max life, wherever that shit is. Uh, here. So it's very important not to have a life modifier. So like check your implicits and stuff. Other than that, you basically want like double armor on the prefix and then ideally fire chaos on the suffix. And then it's very important to craft Gravisius mod, which is the taken as mod. And this is important because this build has 90 max res, right? 90 elemental max res. So like if you get 10% fizz taken as Ellie, that is like 9% PDR, right? Which is insane. In fact, you can take this one step further by getting PDR on this, like this, which would also be very good. So yeah, something like this would be really good. Isn't that insane that you can craft like 10% Fizz taken as Ellie and that translates to 9% PDR? That's actually completely unhinged, but yeah. <laughs> um, and then the gauntlet or the glove is also pretty straightforward it's just life armor, fire res, chaos res and then crafted AoE and then put your auras in there and then boots is also pretty straightforward it's just life armor, fire res, chaos res I think you can kind of notice a pattern here basically on every single item like you want to try to go for life, armor fire res so you can scale your regen and then also chaos res because you don't need other res so like going chaos res is just like good right and then on the boot you can also craft uh, movement speed and onslaught so you don't have to run a silver flask or reduced effective chill shock which you combo with the brian king pantheon and soul of garakhan to get like 100 percent reduced effect of chill Frozen and Shock. And then the Amulet. I would probably say the ideal base is either a Marble Amulet or a Dex Int. The Dex Int Amulet is easier for your, you know, attributes, but the Marble Amulet is probably better in an endgame situation because you can get that regen. And then you want to try to go for, like, Dot Multi, or fire dot multi. It doesn't have to be a hunter base. You can just like use a non hunter base. But you want to go for fire dot multi or dot multi or both. And then also plus one fire or plus one all. And then if you have the ability to, I would definitely recommend crafting increased area of effect and damage because um, that just helps out a lot. Basically, anytime you can get AoE, I would recommend going for it because the bigger your RF circle, the more damage output you have in maps, especially if you're scaling movement speed, right? You just want to maximize the time that your RF is in contact with an enemy. And then for the rings, I would recommend using double amethyst, just so you have an easy time capping chaos res. And these rings, I would basically just craft them again using harvest reforge chaos until you get life. And then you can like benchcraft something random like an attribute or like min frenzy or whatever. And yeah. And then for the belt, if you have immortal flesh, I would definitely use it. The minus 20 res is basically inconsequential because you're a chieftain and you have infinite res. So if you have immortal flesh, I would totally use it. But if you don't, 
I would recommend using a leather belt or a stygian vise. In the case of a stygian vise, you can use like a jewel that gives you damage over time while holding a shield. That's, you know, just get a little bit more damaged because why not? And then if you're not using immortal flesh, you can use like a rare belt with like regen and fire res and chaos res and life and armor or whatever. So that's pretty standard. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's like a basic breakdown of all this gear. And then as for like crafting, uh, not, really, not really much to say. For my character, I ended up crafting these with essences and rog. This body, I used essence spam, I think. Uh, this glove was essence spam. Helmet is essence of horror spam. Belt, I crafted with rog, I'm pretty sure. Shield, I crafted with rog. Boot, I crafted with rog. Rings, I did harvest reforge chaos until I got life, and then I crafted a mod. Um, this ring, I got lucky, and I unveiled focus shock. It's not ne it's not necessary, but like every time you focus, you can like get fifteen percent shock, which is like a little bit extra damage, but definitely not a mandatory mod, especially because it doesn't scale very well with punishment, right? Because punishment already gives you like sixty percent increased damage taken, so you don't want to scale too much of that. And then the the amulet, I used a recombinator because this is Sentinel League, but the, I mean, it doesn't you know you can craft this easy without a recombinator. It was like, probably just use Rog. <laughs> and then the weapon. I also used a Recombinator to craft this, but this is pretty easy to craft. And this is not even correct. Like, all you really need is like, Reforge Fire for this or whatever. Or you can craft it with Rog. Or you can like, Alt Spam and then like, Multimod. But yeah, pretty easy to craft a lot of this stuff. And this 6 link, I just got lucky. I clicked like 200 fusings and I linked it. But yeah, that's, that's basically the breakdown of the gear. Oh, and then for the anointment, I would say the best anointment is this one. You definitely want to get growth and decay. Um, it's just a lot of damage. It's like 175k damage. And then the regen is also good. You get 100 more regen. However, it costs a golden oil, so it's kind of hard to get. For me personally, I just went with entropy. Uh, entropy gives you 23% increased damage over time, and also skill effect duration, which doesn't really do anything, but I guess it's like nice for your fire trap. Um, but yeah, optimally you would use growth and decay. It's just that this uh, entropy one is like so cheap that I would just go for that. Yeah, and then uh, I guess I can talk about gems. This is pretty straightforward. There's like not much to say here. It's just six link righteous fire. This is like completely meta. Everyone's figured this out already. This is the best links. Uh, if you do decide to use uh, life tap and swift affliction, note that uh, swift affliction will not work unless you have life tap because that gives the gem the duration tag. And then I guess if you are an SSF and you have the wrong colors, you could also use concentrated effect but I would not recommend this unless you just like don't have a socket for like another color. Uh, you could also use increased area of effect if you're like doing easier content and you don't need the damage. But I think conk is better because of the more multiplier. Um, other than that, yeah, there's really not much else that you can take here. It's pretty hard to like get the sockets right, but I would just recommend getting an armor base and then using the harvest, using the crafting bench to do triple blue and then use Verici to get the last color. And then, yeah. Um, and then fire trap just goes in the helmet. Obviously you want like burning damage conch on an elder helmet and then spam essence of horror and you put this in here. And then I guess like if you don't have an Elder Helmet, I guess you could also link like Concentrated Effect if you needed to, um, or Burning Damage if you really needed the colors like early on. You could just like use these or whatever. 
But yeah, this is the optimal setup. Combustion is good because it gives you ignite chance. Because this build kind of has a hard time getting the ignite. As you can see, fire traps ignite is 1 million, which is a substantial portion of its damage. And this build only has 70% chance to ignite, which is 25 from combustion, 19 from the weapon, and then holy dominion, which is on the tree, and then a small node as well. Uh, holy dominion is here, and the small node is here. So definitely try to get that ignite chance to a reasonable point if you can. That's why this weapon craft is so important, because you got to get that ignite chance. Otherwise, you're going to have inconsistent damage. And then this is just movement, shield charge, faster attacks, life tap, punishment. Or punishment is not movement, but, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah. Um, I would actually recommend putting the punishment in this link. So you can link it with life tap. And then every time you cast punishment, you trigger life tap which will make your RF have more consistent damage with life tap. But that's a very small thing. It doesn't really matter. And then in the glove, you can put determination, purity of fire, and then like vitality, arrogance, or malevolence. doesn't really matter. You could also put punishment and malevolence. Yeah, because the level, the plus one to malevolence gives you skill effect duration. So you don't need malevolence in the glove unless you valid it and you have a 21, in which case going to 22 would give you like tw like 10K more damage. Like 1% more damage is like 10K, which is so minor. You probably don't even need this in the glove. Just get like a plus one vitality or whatever. And then CWDT, Molten Shell, right? And just Frost Blink, Infernal Cry. Pretty straightforward stuff. Also, for some reason, this build has a lot of int. I guess because you path over here, you naturally have a lot of int. So getting level 20 frost blink is easy. And that also obviously increases your uh, travel distance, right? Scaling this increases your maximum travel distance, which is good. And then it also inflicts chill. And for whatever reason, I was able to like inflict 12% chill just by using frost blink. So yeah, you just blink on the enemy and they get like 12% slow, which is convenient. And then for the config, it's just guardian, pinnacle boss, life tap, low life, burning, ignited, cover in ash. And the ash is coming from infernal cry. And then also it's important to put this here. You wanna put a non-zero value in time spent stationary so that it's gonna calculate the negative 20 from this. And then you also don't wanna, you don't really wanna take any other sources of minus res cause you wanna build around this. So yeah, that's basically the tree here. Oh, and then for the Eldritch Implicits, I would recommend going for a uh, plus one fire res on the greaves, on the boots, and then also uh, plus one fire or all res on the body. If you can get plus one all res, it's better because it also makes your chaos res go up. But, you know, that's also a pretty rare mod to get. So like plus one fire or plus one all is recommended. Uh, and then you can also get another extra plus one fire res if you get purity of fire effect. So here I have taken the lowest rank of purity of fire effect and that is actually giving me plus one fire res because it scales purity of fire's aura effect above a certain threshold and then other than that nothing else matters too much i have like increased armor here which is nice but not mandatory and then i have like leech here and like dot multi which is like a little bit of damage which is cool but like again not mandatory and then, yeah, I guess another thing that would be interesting to show is like the exact ways that I'm getting 90 max res. There's a way that I can do this in POV. Not sure I remember how though. Ah, here, okay. So 90 fire res, right? So you can see a breakdown here 
Uh, so I have 75 fire. I'm just like looking from the top and like going down, right? So I have 75 base fire res max, and then I get plus three from my shield that's crafted, uh, plus one from the implicit on my body, plus one from the implicit of my boot. I have barbarism, which is a node on the skill tree for plus one. Purity of fire is giving me plus five base, and it's getting an additional plus one because it's level 23. Then I have like 40% aura effect on purity of fire, which is giving me an additional one. So in total, I have seven max fire res from purity of fire, five base plus two. And then the reservation mastery is giving me plus one and the armor mastery is giving me another plus one. And that in total is 15. And now I have 90 all res. And you can also see a breakdown here. If you go into your uh, purity of fire, you can kind of see here, if you have above a certain threshold of aura effect mod, it will give you the optimal amount of plus fire res, which I don't really know if how to see it here. Oh yeah, this 12% is from frost blink, which is a guaranteed chill. Um, but yeah, I think the number is like 1.4. Oh yeah, it is 1.4 because purity of fire by default will give you... Okay, so if you have a purity of fire that's level 23, it'll give you 5% max fire res, right? So therefore, if you have your aura effect above 1.4, that will give you extra plus two. Does that make sense? Wait, I feel like I'm conv yeah, okay, so yeah. So every if you have purity of fire at level 23, that gives you 5% max res, right? So then every 20 aura effect you have is additional plus one because 20% of five is one. So if you have 40% aura effect of purity of fire, that gives you plus two. And you can check all this shit in POB pretty easily as well. So yeah, that's how you get 90 all res. Yeah, so that's basically the skill tree. Um, and then what else is there to talk about here? I guess I can also talk about like how I would level this character because this is like a super end game like thing, right? Like, this is like a very optimized end game tree. If I was leveling this, I would definitely do it a little differently. Here, let me open up another window of path of building and I'll show you how to level this i'm gonna try to not keep this not make this video too long but um how do i do this uh let's do this okay so if i was leveling this character let me just go to a new thing let's do chieftain marauder and cool okay so this is like on so here we have the tree so the one on the left is going to be the one, my tree, and then here I'm going to like do a leveling thing. All right, so when if you're leveling, oh, first of all, I have a leveling tree set up here. There's like a optionally, there's like a leveling tree that I have here. And I also have like leveling gems here. A lot of this is like same as pox. And then I also have a leveling item set here with a bunch of random bullshit, mostly just like life fire res. But yeah, let me demonstrate how I would level this character on the skill tree. All right, so first of all, I would like go here. And the most important thing here is to get fire damage. You do this. And let me move this one over. Well, it's unhinged. I don't know why my screen is doing that. Okay, whatever. All right, so. This is like one thing that I think is good. I don't think it's good to go down here because it's just too much defense and not enough offense. So I would recommend going up here and getting these damage nodes first, and then you get this regen. And then you can level with like rolling magma, flame wall, and holy flame totem and get a decent amount of damage. And then after this, I would, well, I can pull up like my leveling tree basically. After this, I think it's important to like start considering like going RF. 
So you go down here, you get the life stuff, and you get like your life node, your life mastery, you get here, you get hardy, and then you take the recovery mastery, which gives you 50 regen, and then here you can go RF, which you get in act two. Then you can like go here and go here and get some res and damage. And then you can go here, get a nice life node, and then you get this area of effect, very important. Then you would probably go up here, and then you take this for more area of effect, very important. And you don't need to take this mastery yet. And then here, you can go here, get another life mastery, get this max life, and then you go here and you go for divine judgment. It's important to path down here so you can get ignite chance. And then this is like your basic like leveling setup. And then you can continue going here and you get your dot multi. Dot multi of killed recently is really nice for leveling. Elemental overload, obviously. Then you can go over here and get more damage. And then here you can actually do this thing where you go here and then here. And then you take off this, this, and this. And now you save like a skill point. And you don't need this node because it's area damage, not area of effect. And then here, you can get your... Uh, you can actually get some more... You have like two options here. You can get mana reservation if you need it. But what I did personally was I did this. I got more damage and I got life and then I got more damage, dude. Maximum damage. And I think this is like a pretty good thing to do early on. Because you get like a lot of damage. And that helps you level through acts because righteous fire can like sometimes have a damage problem. And I basically ran with this setup until like white maps, right? And then after a certain point, you want to start respecking into like your real setup. So like this is the end game setup, right? This is what you want eventually. And here I would start doing this thing where, first of all, I need to get life. So then I would go here, here. This is important, guys. If, if this, is, this is an important tree optimization. So you go here, 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 right? And then you take this regen node, you take the life node, and then you go here, 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 and here. And then you can take off this, 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 and this for four refund points. And then you can use that to get aura effect and reservation efficiency. Grab your max res here. And then you keep leveling up. You go here, 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 here. Get this little node. And then at this point, you can go for purity of fire. And then all your other auras as well. And you can take this aura effect. And then, yeah. That's how you basically respec into the endgame tree. The optimal respec. And then at this point, you can just take whatever. So you get this, and you get another max res here. Right? And then at this point, you can... So here, I would actually recommend that you go for a max res. And the reason is because like this endgame tree assumes that you have max res on your body armor and your boots. So it's like kind of end game but like if you're leveling i would recommend going here 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 and this gives you three max res and then also you take soul of steel which gives you another max res and now you have a lot of max res from the tree right and then you can basically start taking your life masteries now so you take this one to get life and then you take this right and then you don't need this one here so you go like this, and now you can start grabbing life masteries. So one, here, two, three, where's the last one? Ah, oh, I forgot about this one, four. And now you have all your life masteries, all right? And then uh, here, you will also notice you don't have enough skill points, so... At this point, you can also start taking off damage nodes like this because these flat damage nodes are like really good early on, but they're not so good in the end game because they're just flat damage. So you can like take these off in favor of like life nodes, right? 
And then this is like an example of a level 95 tree exactly. And then once you start getting into endgame, you're like super optimized. You have regen now. You have regen. You have life. You got your max res implicits. And then you can take off Hardy. You don't need this anymore in endgame once you have enough regen. And then that allows you to basically go for like jewel stuff. So you can get a jewel socket here and you can get a jewel socket here. And then at some point you take this fire mastery for explode whenever you want to. Just grab that. Uh, you can, wait, here. Oh, you actually don't need this node here. This is actually not necessary. Okay. Um, yeah, so then you can basically do this. And then after a certain point, you get your implicits on your gear. And then you no longer need this because you have your max res implicits. And then you also no longer need this. You, you don't need solo steel once you get all your implicits on your gear. And then you have even more points. And then you can go back into getting damage. And now this is exactly identical to the optimal endgame setup here. So yeah, that's basically how I would build this character. If you want, you can also take call to arms, right? You could also go here, but in my opinion, it's not necessary. Like I actually prefer a little bit of cooldown because it's like easier to like time. I don't like this instant, but some people do. So you can just take that as well if you really want to. But for me personally, I did not find that useful. And yeah, that's basically how it's actually level 90, level 94 as well. So yeah, um, that's basically how I would progress this character. Um, yeah. And then I guess the next thing to talk about would be like the Atlas tree. And this is important because again, like this build is very specific and this build excels at doing very specific content. So my Alice tree here, and you also need to progress the Alice tree a very specific way to like farm correctly. So like this is my end game Alice tree. It is basically harvest abyss. The abyss is only there for farming XP. And then it's betrayal, abyss, map sustain, and shrines. This build is super OP with shrines. I would definitely recommend going shrines. And then also harvest, which I think is also mandatory for the build. So this is my end game Alice tree, but this is not how you would progress it. Um, the way that I progress this Alice tree is very specific and I will demonstrate now how I would progress this. So this is also something that, um, I don't, I've never like done a video like this before where it's like specific, like Atlas tree progression, but this is how I would progress the Atlas tree on this build. So as you can see, and I've written this down in the POB as well, there is like a very, there's like a very specific unveils that you need for this character. Um, also I have two notes here. You can get a plus one fire scepter by doing the gem recipe. And you can get a percent increased fire damage craft in the Eternal Lab in Act Four, in the Eternal Laboratory in Act Four, near Diala. Um, that's like important for leveling. But as you can see, there's like a lot of unveils that you need for this build. So the most important thing when you start out is actually to go betrayal. So here's how I would recommend playing this build at league start, like progressing the Alice tree. And this is actually kind of complicated and I don't think I did it correctly, but this is what I think is optimal. So you would go here first, right? Get this June node. And then you would go over here. And the first thing that you would do is you would do this. And this would allow you to get maximum like unveils early on. And then you basically unveil all your shit and if you can unveil like fire dot multi early on, or if you can unveil 
like plus one area gems, that's like super value and that helps you out a lot early on. So definitely try to get your unveils fast. And then at this point, I would start going expedition right off the bat because this is Righteous Fire Chieftain, right? You can explode everything using your ascendancy and that basically allows you to do expedition super fast. So what I would literally do is I would go up here and get stream of consciousness and then I would just like go here and get this expedition stuff and you can take the Oppenheimer note as well because this build is really good at expedition and you just take this and use infernal cry and chieftain explode and you basically farm a lot of expedition and then you can go down here and you can block all of these things because you don't care about these and then that increases your chance to get expedition. And then I would recommend taking Shaping the Mountains for map drop. And then you can take this portal here and then you go here. And then you go down here, you get more map sustain. And then you go down here and you block all these as well, except expedition, obviously. And you basically just farm a lot of expedition over and over again. And then I would recommend going here and here you have basically two choices. You could decide to go for Kirak or you could go for logbooks. I would actually probably recommend going for Kirak. I did not do this personally, but it makes sense. You got like an additional mission here with chance and you take this for scouting reports. Um, and this basically allows you to like get a lot better Atlas progression but you would definitely take this off in the end game. So you could take this, but then the most important thing is you want to get logbooks. So you do this. And then for this build, I actually think it's very important to get rog because like crafting rog is a very good way to like progress like this character's gear. So I would recommend going here and then going here and getting Danig and rog like that, right? And then now you're like maximum into expedition. And then here, uh, next after this, I would probably recommend like getting more betrayal. So here you would like take intelligence gathering and then you would go down here and take test of loyalty. And now you're like maximum betrayal. And this helps you allow, helps you out a lot with like especially Verici, right? You want to get Verici and research. That's probably the most important thing because that would allow you to like craft the most optimal body armor. You could also just use like a red blue body, which would also be okay. But I think like betrayal early on is like really helpful for like unveils and also just like crafting. And then of course, if you get Ashling and research that allows you to create like a really good scepter potentially. So this is good. And then after you go for a uh, betrayal like this, I would recommend going for essences. Specifically, you want essence of horror to craft your fire trap helmet. And at this point, you're probably powerful enough to do that as well. So you go here. And if you need remnants of corruption, you can also go here. Otherwise, I would just go here. And then you get, or you should probably take this one first. I take it back. Nope. Here. No, not this, this one. And then, yeah, you just go maximum into essence like this or something. And now you can craft your gear. And then at this point, you probably don't want Kirak anymore because you probably have enough, you know, map completion. So at this point, you can probably take off this Kirak node. And at this point, you also probably can take off this because you probably unveiled all your shit already. And if you've unveiled all your shit, you can take this off. And then maybe you can like turn on blight for a little bit to get like your anointment. And then once you got a good enough anointment, you can put this back on. And here I would recommend going harvest. And harvest is actually super important for this build because of this. Like fire res is how you cap your res. And fire res also allows you to get regen. 
So ideally, so you can, this is actually a really cool build because like, um, sorry, shit. It's actually really cool to farm harvest on this build because like there's like tangible deterministic value. Like every time you get purple juice, you can use it to gain region by converting your lightning and cold res to fire. So it's actually like super fun and rewarding to farm harvest on this build. So I would recommend going harvest at this point. So you take off harvest and then I would recommend like doing this. And you can also respec this way, which I think is slightly more efficient. And then you got tier three plants, you got chance for a duplicated life force and chance to get additional harvest. And then now you can pretty comfortably farm harvest. And then after this, you basically have expedition and you have essence and you have betrayal. And at this point, um, if you were playing like a real league, I would probably like keep expedition because it's like super efficient. But if you're pushing for XP, I would recommend going for abyss. And then if you're doing abyss, you would basically go for, uh, first of all, the most important one is this, right? But before abyss, I would actually go shrine. So like in no particular order, you can like take shrines like this and like this, and then also this. And now, cause shrines make this build super fast. And then if you want to go abyss, you can take this. Abyss monsters grant 50% increased XP. And then you take this, um, abyss monsters, abyss grants 5% increased monsters. And then you take the spiral for a lot of abyss monster spawnage. But this is only if you're farming XP. I would not recommend doing this if you're just like trying to farm gear, right? This is like the XP variant of the tree, which I did for my push. As you can see, this is like almost identical to like what I have in this. This is like a good way to get XP. Also, Abyss, right? But if you're just trying to go for like farming, like in a normal league, I would not recommend going Abyss. Rather, I would take like end game map drops like this. And then I would probably take like Searing Exarch Altars at a certain point. So then you might do something like this. And then you go here and you take this. And now you have too many points. But then if you do this, you can like not take this or something. And then you can also just like take off these map sustained things in the end game once you have enough void stones. Or you can like uh, what's going on here? Wait, guys. Wait, I think something is something is wrong with my Alice tree. Uh, I don't really know what's going on. Something like this. You get the idea, right? Something like this. You can also like do this and get the gateway, and then do this, and then like not do this. Something like this. Um, and yeah, that's basically how I would like build the, oh, I, you also don't need the abyss nodes if you're not farming abyss. Oh, and then if you're farming abyss, you would take this off. Remember to take this off. So yeah. So like this is like some something that you could go for in the end game for like just general farming. But that's like, but the, the end game is like not what I want to like talk about. Like what I really wanted to talk about here is like the progression, right? So like this is like an example of how I would progress the Alice tree with Righteous Fire, uh, Chief Ten, right? You want to go for Expedition, Early Betrayal, very important, and then Exarch Altars at some point, and then Essences at some point. But the, the main important takeaway is Betrayal first, and then Expedition, and then essence, and then harvest, and then altars. And then depending on like whether you're pushing for XP, you can go abyss, or you can go shrines, or you could go end game map drops. Doesn't really matter, just whatever you want. And yeah, uh, I'm gonna keep this video 
beneath one hour. Uh, that's it. Uh, goodbye. <laughs>